Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marta, as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Apologies if I sound a bit frazzled, not on my A game. I've had quite the journey home uh, due to what's happened in London Bridge today. I'm not going to go too much into that. Look at the news if you have missed what's happened. But we've got quite a bit of AMD news for you today, and we're going to start off with the Amazon listings for CPUs. So as you guys are undoubtedly aware, Amazon do list their top sellers, and we have results for both Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk. Naturally, as I am from the UK, let's start off with .co.uk, shall we? And as you can see plainly on the screen, the top 10 is pretty much dominated by Ryzen processors. It's not completely filled with them. We see the final three listings, that being the 8th, 9th, and 10th place, being filled with Intel 9th generation CPUs, but the rest of the top 10 is filled with Ryzen. The first place is a bit interesting. We see the 3600, and in the second place, the 2700X, and then we go back to the 3000 generation, and then back to the Ryzen Plus generation with the 2600X, like that, it kind of does this weird kind of switch around for the first few places. Even past the top 10, however, if we go to the top 20, we still see a heavy favouring towards Ryzen processors across the top 20, with, again, it will be mostly Ryzen processors. We only see the i5-9400F, the i7-8700K, and i9-9900, 9900, sorry, KF, um, showing their cells in the top 20 here. But what about Amazon.com, which, of course, be the for the US. And we see a similar story here. In fact, it's even more favoring AMD here as pretty much the whole of the top 10 is filled with Ryzen and only because we have an MSI motherboard, the X570, in 10th place do we not see the entire top 10 being taken up with Ryzen CPUs. And we see an, a similar story as to what we saw with .co.uk here. With the CPUs we see, we see the 2700X in the first position, 3800X in the second, 3600X in third, and 2600 in fourth with the 3700X bringing up the fifth. And in the top 20, we do see a bit more of an even spread, and here's where Intel um, shows itself. In the 11th spot, we see the 9600K, and we saw also see the 9900K, 9700K, and 9900KF, and 9400F showing themselves here as well. But outside of that, it's a pretty even spread between the second, uh, sorry, Zen Plus generation, second generation Zen, and, of course, the 3000 generation, which has just released this year. So, in a very important period for the company, I think AMD is quite happy with how Ryzen is doing. Of course, as you go down the stack, it does become more even, but they can't be complaining about being so strong in the top 10 and top 20 across both domains. And we also have a very interesting report which kind of ties into this from the European Hardware Association. So basically what they have done is they have conducted a survey, and this was of 10,000 people that they have surveyed, so do keep that in mind. The sample size with any survey is very, very important. And when asked about the next desktop processor the, the respondents intended to buy, 60% chose AMD over Intel. And I have a little bit of a statement here from the EHA chairman, Cohen uh, Krins, hopefully I've pronounced his surname correctly. And he said, quote, the last three years have seen AMD gain a lot of momentum in the enthusiast segment. With the Ryzen series of CPUs, AMD has eliminated in lingering performance gaps while offering a great price performance ratio. The surge in, in preference from 50% to 60% over recent months can be explained by the launch of AMD's latest third generation Ryzen desktop CPU. And in case you're wondering what he's referencing there, well, there was a similar survey taken last year where 40% preferred AMD. And there was a survey in May earlier this year which, which showed 50%. So they've been steadily increasing since last year. And obviously we have seen an increase once again this year with the release of Ryzen 3000. When it came to the graphics side of things, unfortunately it wasn't so much in AMD's favour. Unsurprisingly, NVIDIA was the dominant name here by far. 72.8% who read EHA publications would choose a GeForce card. But we did see a small increase for AMD from 19% to almost 23 So, well, again, tiny increase, but we can't really deny the domination from NVIDIA, at least in this particular survey. 
But still, what both of these topics show is that AMD has steadily been gaining ground not only against their competitors, but in the eye of the consumer, which is very, very important. You know, the insane price versus performance of Ryzen is hard to deny. And obviously it really has woken Intel up and they have finally been competitive again the last few years ever since Ryzen took the market by storm, which is great. It means better products for us as consumers. You know, we have seen some really nice products for Intel and we are going to see some in the future. And speaking of the competition between AMD and Intel, we have yet another AMD topic up next regarding third gen Ryzen and Threadripper market positioning. So essentially here, what we have is a quick reference guide which has been released by AMD where they have compared their processors to the competitors they consider from both the 9th and 10th generation from Intel. Oh, before I go any further, I just want to credit Momomo on Twitter for posting this particular image. Thank you very much to them. Their name should be one you are very familiar with by this point. Um, we have used them multiple times for some lovely leaks. So, what does the image or images actually show. Well, so they compare the 3970X to an i9-10980XE. So this is a flagship to flagship comparison. And even if you look at just the pure performance per dollar, we do see the 3970X come out the victor in the top HEDT segment. Following that, as we go down the stack, we see the Threadripper 3970X and 3960X, which are both being compared to the 10920X. So we do see the 3960X come out the winner here. Now there is one thing very worth mentioning. A, uh, this is just the 3960X as being compared here. I, I muddled my words a little bit. I do apologize to say I'm a little bit frazzled, so I am sorry for that. But another thing that's worth mentioning is the 3960X is significantly more expensive than the 10920X uh, that retails at 700 US dollars, whereas the Threadripper part is $1,400 US. Now they didn't just do the Threadripper processors, as I said in my introduction to this topic, they have also done the more consumer mainstream level SKUs as well. So the 3950X is what we have at the top of this particular image, and it's being compared to either the 9920X or the 10920X. So while the processor here is $50 more than the Intel parts, we do see, of course, 16 cores, and does pretty damn well against the 1090XE. And as we go down the stack, we kind of see a similar story where their AMD processors are very competitive against their Intel counterparts, like 3900X. Um, its positions against 9900K. Now, unfortunately, pretty damn hard to get hold of either of these, one due to high demand and one due to Intel's infamous supply issues. But even still, you would make a good decision regardless of which uh, processor you chose, but obviously you would get more threads with the AMD part, but obviously it really depends on what you're after. It's not just thread versus thread when it comes to this sort of thing. Choosing the right processor is very complex, very personal decision, entirely dependent on the sort of workloads you would like to do. But it's nice to see that AMD are doing very competitive against Intel as we go further down the stack even going down to the 3800X or the 3700X as well. So very, very interesting stuff, and I really like to see AMD being so competitive. You know, Paul pointed this out himself in a recent video, but AMD are just being super aggressive, and I love it. I love how aggressive and competitive both companies are being, because we're just seeing really interesting stuff from both of them. Again, AMD has kind of woken Intel up from asleep, a long, long sleep, and they're going, oh, well, oh, crap. Oh, okay, um, here you go, here's some cool products, and what we have is what great choice for the consumer, co competition on both sides. You can arg make an argument for um, a lot of the CPUs on this list, depending on what your budget is, etc., etc., etc. So, that's enough about AMD. Let's move on to something regarding NVIDIA. So what we have is a report from John Petty Research, and basically what they have shown is that the AIB market, that being added in board, has increased in Q3-19 by 42% from the last quarter. Now, what we have seen here is a pretty nice increase for NVIDIA and its market share to 73%. 
And just to put that in a little bit of perspective, their market share last quarter was 77, sorry, 67.92%. Last year they are a little bit down because last year we did see 74.28%, but they're still fairly matching up with what they did last year, you know, take a couple of percent off, but still. And the report also shows that Nvidia has raised the overall AIB market and the RTX line is doing well and represents about 66% of their gaming revenue. As for quarter to quarter, graphics add in board shipments increased by 42.2% and increased by 6.2% year to year. And we also saw a nice little increase for AMD shares year over year as well. Now unsurprisingly, the third quarter is a very strong one. Um, from the previous quarter, like Q2 is kind of the one more quieter ones, and this quarter was up 42.2% from the previous one, just to kind of drive home that point. And this is above the 10-year average of 14.9%, which is very, very cool. And when you look at the desktop PC markets, that also increased 9.6% from the previous quarter. So, really interesting stuff from John Petty Research there. But that is me done for today's video, my friends. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. As always, it does mean a huge deal to both myself and Paul. Hope you all have a lovely weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.